In 2018, Denmark sent a song with a mighty chorus and an equally mighty singer. A song that was written by Swedish composers and which had previously been rejected to the Swedish pre-selection. Remember that choosing a Melodi Festival reject worked wonders in 2010 when they reached a fifth place with In a Moment Like This. The song, Higher Ground, was about a pacifist viking and the singer and his backup team sure looked the part as they themselves resembled the stereotype of vikings or someone out of Game of Thrones. This is Eurovision Legends, I am Eva Lövström, the mother of drag queens. D dragons! Dragons! Welcome to Eurovision Legends, Jonas Rasmussen. Thank you so much. How are you? Well, despite the horrible situation around the world, uh, I'm doing very well. We're we're uh, we're uh, well in my, my little family here, and um, actually, we just got tested because uh, for, for COVID nineteen. Because we're soon, hopefully, uh, knock on wood, going back to to doing some shows again uh, soon. So just to be have a clean sheet to show <laughs> and yeah. it was and it was it was negative as as expected so so we're we're well tell me what is your earliest memory of eurovision um my earliest very clear memory of eurovision is uh the olsen brothers uh, victory in 2000 yeah i can i can remember where i was and and all that stuff Fly on the wings of love. Perhaps the the most uh, flickering memory I have, oldest memory is is, uh, is the guy named uh, Kölikai. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can remember him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it was so unusual for Eurovision and such an unusual winner, and uh, who just got a lot of buzz uh, the following period. <laughs> Yeah, very unusual Eurovision song that he made. <laughs> you ended up in the Danish pre-selection in 2018 with a song that earlier had previously been rejected in Sweden. Yeah. Was this the first time you got a question to compete in Eurovision? Um, yeah, so directly, I've I've be, uh, before been been uh, asked by you you know uh, uh, somebody uh, knowing some other from DR to if I was interested in giving giving a take on a on a certain song, but I never went uh, further on on that uh, specific uh, request. So yes, this was um, the first time when I got so such a specific. Uh, a request from a DR uh, themselves, uh, from Mass, from DR. The original demo was sung by the Swede Dennis Bengtsson. Mm -hmm. And I got permission here to play a snippet of it. If it's not fine with you, I will not do it. But I have the, the, the original demo that he learned the lyrics in 25 minutes before he sang it. Because they, <laughs> they, it was absolute in the last minute to send the song to the Swedish pre-selection. Yeah. What do you say, Jonas? Shall we listen to it? Oh, yeah, yeah you, can, you can play it, yeah. Ships in the making Bound for a distant shore A world for the taking Men gone forevermore Boarding and setting sail Yet victory won't prevail Can you 
you tell me how was the song presented to you? That demo version, like um, uh, from uh, from that uh, that producer from DR, uh, the Danish radio, that um, that just said he had this very uh, strong uh, epic song uh, that he needed a this specific singer uh, look for. Yeah. How much did you know about that it was rejected in Sweden? I think f- f- right from the beginning. Did this affect your decision to the song? No, 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 not at all. You liked it from the beginning? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But still I knew that I I, I wouldn't be able to. I, I told them also that, uh, that I wouldn't be able to do it like he did because my voice is much uh, brighter. So I also requested that we could elevate the song, you know, uh, just uh, uh, in tonality, just a little bit. Um, so, yeah, to, just to give it my own take on it. Th- that was their initial... I talked to Dennis Bengtsson yesterday, and there were no hard feelings at all. But he mentioned that people around the project was disappointed. First, that it didn't get through in Sweden, but mostly because he wasn't allowed to sing it. Was this anything you were aware of? Of course, I, I'm, I'm aware that... Um, that they wanted the more uh, dark tone of the voice uh, it, it, because it, it's more like, you know, it's more like a uh, warrior, manly, brutal, liking to have a, this uh, deep uh, timber in, in the voice. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I never, uh, I, I never, it, it's a different song uh, with me yeah. from, from Dennis's. Uh, so, uh, of course, there would definitely be someone uh, requesting a, a lower, uh, a different take than than mine. But uh, but I, it's definitely it was it's my I I I've, I've, I have never got any uh, su- suggestion from composers or some or um, the, the the Danish delegation that they were unhappy with uh, with uh, with uh, with it not being Dennis. Good. But yeah, of course. It, I feel I, I know uh, I would be uh, uh, disappointed too if it if I was if I had sent higher ground to uh, Melody Festival because I definitely think that it's it's more than uh, good enough to to take part in that uh, competition. But the rules, uh, of course, you can't send a Swedish song, uh, a Swedish songwriters with a Swedish singer, not with a Danish uh, parts in it at all to a Danish melody. Uh, national final so so that's just the rules yeah tell me about your staging who came up with the idea i did that in co- collaboration with with dr of course it, uh, we just uh, threw some ideas around and then uh, they sort of uh, put it all together and your looks suits the song very very well and as you <laughs> remind everyone of a proud viking did you have this look already before, or was it something you acquired of or enhanced to fit the song, like, like letting your hair and beard grow? No, I've I, I've had this uh, this look for uh, for many years. Not maybe not the length of the beard as long as I did in Lisbon, but but definitely the long hair and beard uh, style for for many years. It was 10 songs in the Danish final. Do mm-hmm. you remember who you thought was going to be your biggest competitor? Uh, it was, initially, it was uh, definitely um, the girl who came second, uh, Anna. Uh, uh, Anna Ritzmark? Starlight, Park? yeah. No matter where we go, no matter where we hide, no matter if it's cold, you're by my side. Tonight we're high on love, tonight we're high on stars. I, because she was, uh, I, I thought it was a very well well written song, and in, and you know in Eurovision wise you need to hook people uh, immediately, and I th- I thought it had a very cute and uh, and great vibe. Yeah. Uh, and also, if if the Danes really wanted to go the very classic Eurovision way, it could also have been uh, initially. Uh, I thought that the Carl sisters uh, had a a very uh, Eurovision catchy song and they yeah looked great and sounded great oh 
of these 10 songs, three songs were chosen to go through. And later, with over 50% of the votes, you won. Yeah. That were was you surprised? Great... Um, yeah. Of course, uh, I, I I never I never want to want to go to the thought of thinking that it's just a, a home safe victory or something like that. Even though I was the favorite um, in many in many eyes and and with with the book booker bookers and stuff like that, but fifty percent was definitely um, a surprise for me. The contest in 2018 was held in Lisbon. Tell me, how was your weeks there? They were great, awesome. I loved it being there because I just feel we had uh, the, the best, uh, the best team. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm so grateful that I got to share it with the, with the, with my with my uh, backup singers and the team in general. We were just uh, very uh, in sync. Uh, yeah. I think. Uh, uh, and loved uh, hanging out with uh, the other artists and uh, meeting fans and, and, and press. Uh, it was just a great experience. Do you remember anything special that happened behind the scenes or anything that the Eurovision fans have missed out on? Yeah, so, so the special thing was that, uh, of course, that Will Ferrell suddenly uh, showed up, but I didn't, <laughs> but I didn't get to meet him. <laughs> it was everybody else. Uh, no, a couple, a couple of other uh, of the artists, but otherwise, in that behind the scenes, it was, it was. Uh, uh, I, can't, I can't remember anything, you know, like crazy, controversial stuff happening. But behind the scenes, it was just uh, uh, us artists hanging out together in different uh, hotel lobbies and bars, and and uh, just getting to know each other behind all the all the exposure. Did you become friends with any from the other delegations? Yeah, definitely. We um, hung out a great deal with uh, with Ari and uh, uh, Cesar and uh, the uh, uh, Ste and, uh, and Coco from uh, Switzerland, and uh, and just talked uh, uh, very uh, very good with uh, Eugen from Albania and uh, a lot of the other artists, Elena from Estonia, also. Did you have any favorite among the other songs? Well, my personal favorite favorites uh, deep down, I I probably didn't think they would win. But my personal favorites uh, favorite because I'm I very much like uh, rock music. Uh, were uh, my favorites were uh, Eugene and uh, and Sid. Of course, yeah. I loved all the, a lot of songs. Caesar was also just a, such a great song, and too. Yeah, and Eugene Bush Peppa's uh, voice is phenomenal. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, you were in the second semi final together with my home country, Sweden, and you got a fifth place and qualified to the final. Mm -hmm. Were you confident that you would reach the final? Yeah. I was. I, I wasn't uh, very uh, outspoken about it because I, uh, I hate to jinx stuff. So I'm a very knock on wood <laughs> type <laughs> of guy. So I wasn't very uh, um, outspoken about it. But I, I really felt that that if we just uh, did our job, of course there was the you can never um, you can never uh, say in advance how you're going to feel because there's so many people and it's three minutes uh, where you have to, to do your, your job. You can never. Of course there would be nerves stuff like that but but I, I felt like it if we if we didn't go through it would be be because we we did something very bad on stage because i really felt like we we had a great song and 
great vibe around us and stuff like that. So I was pretty confident, yeah, deep down. Tell me about the final day. What are your memories or is everything a blur? Everything is a blur. <laughs> really. <laughs> it was... Uh, um, the days after the semifinal was pretty much a blur because we were just so happy that we got through. So it, it was... the yeah, Of course, it was only, only the Friday between. Uh, so it just... We wanted to do the best we could, and uh, suddenly it got uh, Saturday, and we had to uh, pre rehearse the flag ceremony, and and we just went with it. And uh, actually, it was just in the queue, I think, that uh, I said to the other guys, uh, "Let's come on, guys, let's let's do something, uh, let's do something funny." When they say Denmark, uh, and then uh, then I, um, then we decided to do the beard uh, touching uh, stuff when they say. And they said uh, Denmark. Um, so it just it, it kind of lightened up all the mood, and we were cracking up backstage. And some of the other artists <laughs> that that got to see it at the ceremony was also cracking up. I, I, it lightened our mood and um, it got rid of some nerves, I think. And and we just we just enjoyed ourselves. You ended in a ninth place, but were ranked five. If only the televoters would decide. Yeah. The jury have only had you on a twentieth place. Yeah. Why do you think the jury ignored your song? I think it's uh, different aspects. Uh, first of all, I th I think it's pretty much a, a love it or hate it song. Uh, uh, no, love it or hate it performance because we go all in. You know, it's it's a very dramatic and epic song, and we and we made the staging very uh, dramatic and uh, epic too, and. Uh, Five guys uh, marching around on a stage singing an epic song with uh, with this uh, visual style of Game of Thrones and Pirates of the Caribbean. I think a lot of jur jurors may have thought that it was over the top, maybe not radio friendly and um, and all that stuff. And maybe they just also maybe they didn't like our performance, uh, our singing stuff like that. That that could be some of it. I think mainly it's because of it's that it's just so much the song and it's not um it's it's very movie like. Uh what do you think about the winner and the winning song? She was always like, you know, the, the favorite the whole process through. So she, I think we all just thought it's she she, uh, she definitely would be in the top uh, and when you when you were there you could just feel the the room was uh, with her. Yeah. Of course, you can. I, I also felt the room was was with me, but it had just uh, such a, a special uh, vibe around it, and and uh, she did a great job on stage, and uh, it's a very catchy song. So I'm not surprised that it uh, that it won. <laughs> What happened after Eurovision? I got to relax and get home to my kids. And that was very, <laughs> <laughs> and that was very, <laughs> very needed. And uh, I just got back to picking up on all the uh, stuff I left, and also um, the different gigs and appointments that got in. Yeah. So uh, I just pretty much just went with the flow, as much as I felt possible, and what I wanted to do. Last year in 2019, you released a song called "Go Beyond." Yeah. Well, immediately we uh, went back to going in the to to Sweden just to find out what uh, what we would uh, do. Um, we I thought we worked well together, so I decided just uh, to just to go with uh, go with the flow with them. I got some different. You know, mails. I got some different offers yeah. or requests from people. Not decided, not not specifically uh, offers that said this and this, but some requests of of if I wanted to do a uh, you know some Viking album and style uh, like that. But but I, it was never my intention to to you know to to become a an only a recording artist. So yeah, I just uh, went with the sweets and um, and we. Uh, we just started to to think what would be a follow up to higher ground and ride uh, ride together and and then go beyond uh, we started uh, recording that in the in the fall yeah in the fall 
and released it that in, in January. And I didn't want to release a higher ground too. This is the same medieval type um, epic song. Uh, I, then I, in my mind, I would have a harder time going other where musically in the future, in my mind, if, if it wasn't a, uh, if it wasn't something a little different than higher ground. That's why we chose uh, to release Hope, uh, Go Beyond. Yeah, and, and campy epic Viking songs doesn't write things every day, I believe. No, I love, I will always love Higher Ground. I will, I will always love what we did in, uh, in Eurovision. But, um, but I'd, I'd like, I'm an old guy now. In my mind, I'm an old guy now. So I, I'd like to not be locked in this uh, Viking image uh, forever uh, people can call me viking uh, all they want that's perfectly fine but it's just that i can move fairly free in the music style music genres uh, that that's that's my that that's what i would prefer so tell me what you live to see somewhere someone's making history out there marching to a Part and shape and things to come. How many times are we to crash and burn? How many times before we finally learn? How do we manage to unbreak the bond if we don't find a way to go beyond? Oh. Would you like to do your vision again definitely if uh, i write a great song or i co-write a great song um, that we think uh, would fit your vision and uh, or if i get presented with a, a great song uh, and and I'm, my calendar is free uh, for, for in the time uh, in the period of, of both the danish national final and uh, the eurovision uh, then definitely have you been offered songs to the danish melody grand prix No, not since. No, no. But I've been also been uh, unable to to participate, unfortunately. If somebody had asked me, found me, so so luckily I didn't get the Eurovision winner uh, uh, offered to me. Because, uh, that that would have been hard to decline. But no, nobody uh, offered anything for me. But why did you have to decline? If so, oh, because I because I had a. I have had uh, shows, tours. Okay, yeah. Uh, when the when the the finals, uh, no, the, the Danish national, the pre-selection was, yeah. But but again, just to say, nobody offered me anything that I had to decline. But I would have been forced to decline if if I was offered anything. This spring, we could see you in Eurovision home concerts where you performed higher ground and then let the audience select your cover from Danzevisa, Tears Getting Sober, Fairy Tale, and Only Teardrops. Yeah. Let's talk about why you choose these four particular songs. Only Teardrops because, uh, of course, I, I wanted to celebrate a Danish great winner. I got to work with Emily in a TV show. Uh, I just think it's a very good song, and I felt that I I had a new take on it. I've played around with so uh, with some different chords, uh, so that's why I chose that one. The sky is red tonight. We're on the edge tonight. No shooting star to guide us. I for a night. Why tear each other apart? Please tell me why. Why do we make it so hard? Look at us now. We only got ourselves to blame. It's such a shame. How many times can we win and lose? How many times can we break the rules between us? Only teardrops. How many times do we have to fight? How many times do we get it right between? Uh, Dance of Easy because it's my f- favorite, uh, probably one of my f- favorite uh, favorite Danish uh, songs in the Dance Melodic Um and sung it before. And we also did that in Lisbon. 
Um, and Tears Getting Sober because, in my mind, uh, a top two song of, for the new, for the for this year. Yeah. Um, Which one was the other one? Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> there actually, there I felt like it was a very uh, um, crazy. It was a crazy year because there wasn't wasn't, wasn't a clear winner like uh, the other the previous years. But I felt like that these two songs uh, were the best of the bunch. And uh, Fairy Tale, because I did it at a concert in Denmark at some Eurovision, some Eurovision, you know, uh, celebration stuff, and I did it. And uh, I've never really sung it before, and uh, and I, I just liked uh, I liked singing it, and yeah. uh, and met of course Alexander in in Lisbon. Fan uh, who's were very humble and very very nice guy uh, to talk with, and so yeah, I just. Felt like that could be a fun one to do too. Denmark made their debut in Eurovision in 1957. Of all the Danish songs, which one is your favorite? It's uh, I think it's Dance Visa. <laughs> And uh, and I also love the song on Jana and Bohemian. Uh, that's my favorite. Yeah. That's your favorite. Yeah. Yeah, I well, love that's, it. That's that's my probably the, my top two. It's also a song I've played a lot because I, especially since becoming a dad, it's it just uh, it's very it it moves me every time, and I think it's just such a, such a great song. And uh, Rasmus Sebach, his son, did a cover of it some years ago, and it's fantastic too. Yeah, that's fantastic too. It's a great cover. Yeah. But there's something about Tommy doing that song because, of course, it's it's him uh, writing and singing about his his uh, children. Yeah, that that's a great song. Thank you so much for taking your time to talk to me. Well, my pleasure. It was awesome. Do you think we have missed anything? Is, is there anything you want like to promote? No, no, not the 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 whole Corona situation uh, put a pin in a in a lot of in a lot of in a lot of things. And I, I had a song that we were talks in talks to release before it all, but uh, yeah, but it, now it's on hold. So I I I don't know anything about when we will do anything about it. So unfortunately, not. Can you tell me what kind of song it will be? If it's the one we had before, it, it's in the same style as I think as Go Beyond. Actually, also a little bit uh, with uh, with a very strong chorus like Higher Ground, but um, but a little bit in the music style. But I, but I, again, we're we're a lot of people who needs to agree on when when to and what to do with the song. So maybe maybe it won't be that song, and maybe it will. I don't know. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Great. And thanks to you, dear listeners out there in the world. I'm so proud and thankful that you are listening, writing to me and sharing my episodes on your social media. You can contact me with suggestions, questions, opinions, or whatever you feel like by emailing me at email at lagervadena.se or through Facebook or Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe so you're always updated with new episodes. Thank you so much. We keep no in touch. Problem. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye.